welcome to the only guide around Indonesia you'll ever need. Buckle your belt, subscribe, hit that notification bell and let's embark on a trip of a lifetime together. In our last part, we explored mainland Bali. We started with a day of relaxation at the Blue Karma Resort in Seminyak and paid a visit to the local barber. Without hesitation, we drove up to Ubud, where we had one of the best massages on this island. We caught the sunrise over the Tagalalang rice terraces and a sunset over the Kambuhan Ridge Trail. We visited one of the many purifying temples surrounding the area and took a trip further north, where we paddled a traditional wooden boat around the rising temple of Uludano and uncovered the mystery of the famous Handara Gate. We also first-handedly struggled on the steep hills of high-altitude coffee plantations. Thankfully, there was a coffee waiting for us at the end. However, for me, the highlight had to be the trekking around the Yatului rice terraces, where lunch is served with the best of views. And finally, it's time for us to start island hopping! Or in the rainy season, I might suggest a combination with some plane hopping. Our next island is less known compared to Bali, which means less crowds and more development. It's actually trying to follow Bali in its footsteps. You probably haven't guessed it, but we're flying to East Nusa Tenggara. Air Asia, as well as some other low-budget Asian companies, offer daily flights from Denpasar Airport in Bali to Labuan Bajo. Labuan Bajo is a smaller city still in development on the northwest of the Nusa Tangara island. You're probably asking yourselves, what the heck am I thinking trying to suggest you to go to visit this island you've probably never even heard about? Well, Labuan Bajo is actually the best starting point for visitors to Komodo Islands. And in the rainy season, you can avoid rough seas this way. In a nutshell, you have two very different options for your exploring of the Komodo Islands. There are several of them. You have the main Komodo Island with the Komodo dragons, and the rangers taking you around the park. There's no other option of visiting it. If you're limited in number of days and visiting in the rainy season, my best advice is to book a day trip or a two nights trip, but you have to be smart with booking your plane tickets in this case. And we come to our other option, which is a multi-day cruise. This is ideal for those visiting in the dry season when there is no chance of encountering the wild seas. So if you're going to book a day trip, I would suggest another lovely experience you have an option of trying out on this island and that is booking yourself a bamboo tree house experience. That is exactly what we did. We enjoyed the amazing view from our little bamboo house on the hilltop. We really, really enjoyed our breakfast in the middle of nature. We loved the proximity of it in general and the entire glamping experience was very comfortable. There weren't abundant bugs. Somehow the staff has got that under control. I'm not sure how they're succeeding, but they are. We were also amazed how the staff went out of their way to enable us to try durian at their place because we really wanted to try it. We've never did before. You ready? I don't know. Are you ready? It's like eating soup stuff. Is he gonna survive or not? Tastes like what it smells like. Oh no. So the verdict? Nah. I've eaten better fruits. <laughs> But it's not too bad. Wanna try it? Uh, and it's the little things that make the entire experience even more special. We started our day trip to Komodo National Park with an early morning pickup from our bamboo houses and further on with the boat to our first stop, the magnificent Padar Island. It's a completely uninhabited island with a walking trail along its core that brings you to one of the most beautiful viewpoints you've ever witnessed in your life. I promise. Just look at it. Of course, we just had to top it up somehow. And we did so by bringing our own breakfast boxes with us. 
After our hike back to the small dock where our boat was waiting for us, we continued to the other side of this island. Here we had the privilege of enjoying the famous pink beach. It was indeed pink, without using any filters, which I was surprised upon because I've seen many pink beaches and I have to say they only usually become pink after applying a filter. However, this one is indeed pink in real life. We were both amazed by the small coral reef that lined this beach. It was full of life. There were small, colorful, lively fishes swimming around us and it was an experience that kept us in the water till the last minute. And now, only after we've already had a bundle of amazing experiences in our day, did we make our way to the Komodo Island of the Komodo Islands of Indonesia. We took one of the trails and were of course accompanied by rangers, as this is the only possible way to explore this island for our own safety. And we dragon spotted. We visited their feeding area and had the privilege of finding three of them on our way. After this midday trail walk, we were really looking forward to cooling off and our tour had just a spot in mind. They took us to a magnificent land patch in the middle of the ocean. It's surrounded by a coral reef and if you're lucky and if you have good eyesight, there's a pretty big chance you'll spot a turtle or two. Meanwhile, we were served small lunch boxes and let me tell you, those taste even better in the middle of the sea after an active day. This was also the first spot on this trip we were actually allowed to fly our drone and my designated driver went all out on this one. Next on the agenda was swimming with manta rays. However, this was not really one of my favorite experiences. <laughs> Let me paint the picture. It was a cloudy day with some rough sea and naturally the mantas got scared and I don't think there was much of anything here. So perhaps for manta ray spotting this might not be the best timing. Nevertheless, we continued to a cute small Kanawa island, which I believe is the fourth island we're visiting. It's a bit off the beaten track with amazing palm trees and a brave minuscule Mr. Crab. When we returned home to our tree houses, we were absolutely exhausted from the day and all the energy we have had, we have put into ordering dinner to our room before we blacked out for the night. Labuan Bajo is different from Bali. You have a massive port and navy dominating the shore. It all looks brand new, but a step back inside the coastal streets, there are favela-like houses with rats running over chickens and children playing among it all. And another step further inside, on the other side of the sandwich-like structure, there is another fabulous street with expensive restaurants and oversized cafes. It's an unusual melange of opposites, and among all of it sits the only Covid survivor massage spa that we tested out and have to give them all the possible compliments. Do book in advance because they are the only massage spa in town. To our surprise, plenty of restaurants in Labuan seem to be Italian owned. For one, we went to Rainbow Sushi. Delicious poke bowls and great sushi with really friendly staff that loves to chat. It's owned by an Italian and an Aussie. We also dined at an enormous restaurant right next to the bamboo houses we stayed in. Brutally oversized, overstuffed and also Italian owned. It seems almost like Labon is preparing and it's ready to be the next biggest hit in Indonesia. It's indeed an interesting town to explore. One of the things that caught our interest is the fish market. One of the dining spots we'd recommend but personally missed out on because of poor planning is this fish market. This local fish market with amazing fish you choose from for a great buck and also support locals directly. Ready to continue our island hopping? Because we still have some days left before we leave this beautiful paradise in Indonesia. 
After catching our return flight back to Bali, it's time for another small, majestic and amazing island that has to be a must on your list. It's also only 35 minutes by boat, by fast ferries, away from Bali, so it'll take us no time to reach the absolute crown jewel among islands in Indonesia. Feels like time is passing slower, everything is even more laid back and everyone seems to be living for the moment. You know we could never miss out on the island that's been on my list of must-dos ever since I could locate Indonesia on a map, so that's a while. It's famous for its magnificent cliffy coastlines and notorious for stealing your heart away. So don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and watch out for the grand final. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll be seeing you soon. Bye!